It's because they're a seething mass of imbeciles, Chi Chi, and it's never gonna get any better. <laughs> never! Yeah. Oh, surrender, excellent. I needed to speak with you. Well, I'm not exactly coming in here to admire your Joan of Arc painting. I needed for you First to... off, but I was just informed that somebody posted bail for that fake Bruce mm. who came on this ship in the last episode. Subsequently, Chi-Chi and I went through your online bank postings and we think uh, we know who the culprit is. But set on intrusion. Well, yeah, whatever. Well, you were the one who agreed to give Mr. Dragonseal access to all of our personal info. <laughs> now, I better not find that scheming hussy slinking up onto this boat again now that he's free. No, I assure you that he is finny with that fantasy and is now deeply engaged with his professorial duties at the university. Mm -hmm. Now, as you may know, I have for some time sensed the parallels between members of our group and the characters in Waiting for Godot. Yes, I also got through talking to Mr. Dragoncell about the project you cleared through him. <laughs> oh, je suis ravi. I have only once played the part of Vladimir, but never once attempted the play in a directorial capacity. Uh, well, here's a caveat for you, Catwoman, because I know you love words like caveat. We're making some changes in the script. Basically, we changed the script. Now it's called Waiting for the Dragon. And we're all gonna be, you know, waiting for the dragon. Set it except top Catwoman, we are not getting our joystick anywhere near that nest of snakes. The Beckett estate don't play, woman. If they find out you're doing a Beckett play and you don't follow it to the letter, they'll sue you till you're floating down the Atlantic on a splinter wearing a torn piece of cheesecloth. I believe that to be an exaggeration. Well, I'm not taking any chances. So get your fancy girdle on and get ready to meet the dragon. <laughs> or wait on the dragon. Or write him a billet doux. Or send him a coupon for a free bag of pork rinds at the Shame on Me Shack. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. <laughs> it's the Dragon Sale Puppets Variety Show. Starring Sorinda. Bruce. Catatonia and Henri, featuring the Dragon Cell Puppets Band. Anchors away. Out of the steam, out of the steam, 
Drag it. Out of the street. Out of the street. Out of the street. Drag it. Out of the street. Out of the street. Out of the street. Drag it. Put the core on the side. Put the core on the side. Shining above the steam, it seems to we who see that we are always shining above the steam, it seems to we who see that we are always shining above the steam, it seems to we who see that we are always to the corner on a side, 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 to the corner on a side. Once again, you find yourselves in the company of the divine. <laughs> now, I know some people would tell you to beware of too much of a good thing, but I say it's your journey, honey, and you are right to be here with me soaking up my radiance. <laughs> oh. Now, some of y'all backstage have been commenting on this pendant, what all I'm wearing here. Y'all say it reminds you of Georgia Hot Flash. Well, I think it's a frog turning into a beetle that thinks it's some kind of fertility goddess. Yes, Georgia did give it to me. Yeah, it was a gift to her from that archaeologist sugar that benefactor of hers. <laughs> I'm using it to cover up a stain from my slimming shake that spilled out when that silly dumb fruit tripped and fell up against me. Oh. Also, it reminds me of how well sculpted I look by comparison. <laughs> Okay, speaking of grandiose art that mistakenly believes itself to be on a higher level than surrender, Catatani is gonna put you through it again. Law, oh, I don't know what to tell you. She done got it written into her contract that every so often she gets to hit everybody over the head with a 75 pound book full of gastric old men bloviating about the meaning of life. <laughs> First, she was going to launch a production about the myth of Xanadu. I told her there ain't no need. We all know that it's about getting your ass kicked because you ate honeydew for breakfast down a unicorn in a garden. And besides, there's already a movie made about it which absolutely failed to create a roller disco craze. <laughs> Well, now she thinks she wants to make you sit through a play that, for all I can tell, is literally about two smelly old men complaining about their bunions and their prostate troubles. Now, don't y'all worry. Surrender's playing interference here. And whatever that cat woman throws out, I will be there to make it something funky or beautiful, depending on the season. <laughs> so now, I gotta hurry backstage and see what's being cooked up in my absence, which I must utterly destroy. So y'all sit tight, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> be better for a Beckett player if all the characters wore black. Somebody turn that hussy's mic off, Chi Chi. Lord, I still hear her swarming around like a blood-sucking gnat. Uh, I wonder sometimes, could it be wrong for me to smell as good as I do? Could it be sinful? <laughs> Illegal? I mean, seriously, could a hussy wind up her ass in jail? Almost happened before. There I was standing outside the Hobnail Lounge with Little Miss Petri Dish, and they thought I was the hooker? <laughs> Witness for yourself what happens when willing participants experience my honeysuckle passion wafting through the air. <laughs> oh, very nice. Now just sit there and open your fool mouth and speak. Can you do that? Uh, it, it smells like jelly on a summer day. Uh, with all dew donuts being lowered to appease thee. My mama wears it. Because it's free. Smells like pot. No, you! You! You smell like pot! <laughs> now, I can't take responsibility for all the love-hungry victims that are about to fall into your tender, sticky web, honey. <laughs> but bravely and proudly go forth to wear my honeysuckle passion. And get you some cards made up with a fake name and a fake number, honey, because you'll need them. <laughs> you'll surely need them. Huh? 
Did they has to be a lone tree, Serena? No, the tree is the unifying it, symbol. It's the we're symbol gonna have a fall God a forest of trees, the and they're gonna be pretty because we need something nice to look at while we're waiting for that this, dragon. This robs us of a focal point. Well, I don't intend to get robbed by the bacon oh, clay cat from Bald and Dash. Oh, Chee Chee, do you have me at me music queued up to play while we sort this out? <laughs> Thank you, hon. Cigar. Together, the primordial Adam in all of us, waiting for God. Waiting for the drag. <laughs> I'm waiting for Bruce. A vigil they keep, that we keep, each day, each night. Witness the pathos of the faithful, forever keeping an appointment, bereft of reward and sustenance. <laughs> I got my boot caught in some dealies. I thought you were gone. Forever. Me too. Where were you? In the can. Why so long? I got my boot stuck in the whirlpool of my jig. You were flushing the toilet and jumping around in it again. That silly job, fool. I don't know. Must I? Why don't you take off your boots? Because they're pretty. Boots must be taken off every day, I always tell you. Meh. Ow! They hurt my tootsie. Well, I guess you could say you're sorry. For what? I don't know. You must have done something. Hey, tell me a story. Why? It'll pass the time. The time will pass anyway. Tell the one about Georgie Hot Flash. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the one where her mail order butt pads popped out when she was bent over in the parking lot picking up a Twinkie. <laughs> Nasty business. But Little Miss Petri Dish said it was a ding dong. Well, I heard Valvita Flame said it was an oatmeal cookie. Well, they don't agree, and that's all there is to it. 
I wonder if there are still some chocolate bunny ears in the pantry. <laughs> hey, let's go find out. We can. And why is that? We're waiting for the dragon. Me. Henri Amir and Bruce are gone, represent the soul and the body respectively. Henri Amir, the spiritual aspect, clings to God. The dragon. And Bruce are gone is merely concerned with food, drink, and sleep. <laughs> oh, shit. Their vigil continues. I'm hungry. I think I have a carrot. I'd rather chew off my boot. It's either that or a turnip. You've got to be kidding me. That's a picnic basket full of poopy. Hey, let's go see what Stormcloud has in his duffel bag. Oh, it's nothing but gummies. Well, I think it's boring to be waiting around, waiting for dealies to happen that just say, Oh, well, maybe I'll show up with ding-dongs and drinkies, and maybe I won't. I mean, that chafes my stump. Well... You sure we're supposed to wait here? Yes, beside the tree. Trees, hon. It's a forest. Oh, Trees, yeah. plural. Yeah, yeah. Try not to get sued here. Well, I've heard dragons are scary with 10,000 eyeballs and fire coming out everywhere. I don't know why we should wait around for all that. Well, I guess we can at least hear what he has to offer. Hey, is that him? That's just the wind. Or a skunk. Or a ghost camel carrying off the newly departed to the other side. Uh, my feet hurt. Why don't you take off your boots? Me, I'm blasting out of this Tupperware party. You can't. And why is that? We're waiting for the dragon. Me. fly because they have wings thoughts are heavy of distant things birds fly because they can stay in round in the sky around they'll pray that the sky will allow their breeze Play, throw 
solid when the winter came You remain, remain Once something has come down How can it ever be totally away? So in the mist we dream of distance a self-repeating cycle displaced due to a collision of opposing intentions. The Ark is the main plot of Arriamir and Brusagon. The Cone is the intrusion of Sorindo and Stormy into the sea. Oh, sweet Georgia Tay. An explosion where the Ark and Cone meet results in a catharsis of utilizable... Let's goose this hussy. We gotta get moving. <laughs> Storm Cloud can't go around on his knees as long as he used to. Caustic old witch. How's the carrot? Man, the more you eat, the worse it gets. Onward, hussy! Well, here I am, the one you've been waiting on. I am the dragon. But surrender, you can't change the entire narrative. Oh, loosen your bunny slippers, lady. I'm just having fun. <laughs> It is I, the amazing Sorrento, here to save the world with beauty, wit, charm, and song. Oh, wow. And this aging glam rock Peter Pan flunky is my underling, Stormy. He don't speak unless I tell him to, and I never tell him to. Yep, that's right. Sorrento and Stormy, completely original characters that have never, ever, before been featured anywhere in any play. Whatsoever. Does he get tired of crawling around like that? Man, my knees are killing me. Nah, he likes it. Shut up, hussy. <laughs> Does he have anything yummy in his duffel bag dealy for me? No, you silly hound, because you can't hold your liquor or your watermelon. But let's just try to get through this godforsaken piece of art without a mess on the floor, shall we? No. Does he do anything besides crawl around? Well, he dances, if you can call it that. Oh, I want to see the dance scene! And sometimes when he gets torqued up out of his mind, he'll start talking a bunch of stoner trash. Oh, I'd love to hear it. Okay. Well, hussy, you heard him dance. <laughs> oh, man, I gotta get up. No, see, if you stand up, you'll be out of the frame. <laughs> this feels like the time I fell off my drum stool. <laughs> Which time? Yeah, it was that time we were all playing at the Hobnail Lounge 25 years ago. Ten years ago. And a bunch of Hell's Angels came in and started wrestling, and one threw a smoke bomb, and it went right up Sorinda's dress. <laughs> oh, wow. I believe I've told that story before. Oh, oh, and then the time Sorinda had too many slimming shakes and was wearing that white gown. And <laughs> Back up, hussy, that's enough. Well, folks, I think our obligation is done here. I think we have educated and inspired, and now I gotta go run an empire. Now let's all try to wind this up. <laughs> oh, what hussy! I wanna go too. Let's put a bottle rocket in this PTA meeting. We can. Why? <laughs> We're waiting for the dragon. Oh! Imagine the land, 
Be to follow out the way the stretches before me like the stretch behind it made possible today. Stretches before me like the stretch behind it made possible today. Before me like the stretch behind it made possible today approach alas not the dragon for which ye seek but a mere lad come to hint at the fragmentation and disarray of christendom to inspire your hopes of salvation and dreams of paradise only to damn you to despair to the ennui of the ceaseless vigil by informing you that god the dragon <gasps> the dragon will not be able to meet with you this evening, but surely, surely, tomorrow. Okay. Dragon stirring out to sea. audience in this galaxy. Oh. Catwoman, how many more of those treasure troves of wisdom are you allowed to shovel out according to contract? The provision is unlimited until further negotiation. Oh, crap. Well, folks, we sure appreciate you staying strapped down to your chairs, and the usher will be around very soon with the key to release you. <laughs> and thanks once again to me at Me Music. That's me expressing music exploration, babies, <laughs> for unleashing all that masterfulness. <laughs> and now you know your homework, hun. Suck it! Not yet. Oh. Y'all go forth and live in life. Oh, or suck it up, pussies! <laughs> Oh, 
Oh.